FKIK legs again. Um, I've tried this a few times and made a few mistakes. Uh, you've really got to name them. Just joints on their own won't do. I'm sure you know that, but definitely have to do it at the start here because we'll be copying the legs. Uh, otherwise, you'll get in trouble um, with the naming system. I've just called this one one, this two, this three, and four, and tip. There we go. Tip. I put that on because when you're skinning, you want to ignore tips. Um, this is just representative. It's actually this bone that will drive the rotation. Okay. So we're going to select the parts we want to duplicate. And we're going to be making an IK leg and an FK leg that will drive this middle main leg. I'm selecting the three parts here. Um, I am just going to go ahead and let's have a look at the hierarchy the way it is there now. And if I go ahead and edit duplicate so we have a second second leg now in there um, but it's connected to the the root joint um, if I push it aside here you can see the connection and we don't want that um, this can be totally separate object entity um, in fact it works better if it is so I in the outliner, I'm just going to select the, the top part. This would be the first bone here. And skeleton disconnect joint. Now it's a, a different entity. Okay. Um, I'm going to put it in its own layer. So if I hold shift and press the plus sign, it'll drag everything down here. Um, I could just go edit and select hierarchy. I'm just clicking on them there. And I am right clicking and add selected objects. So they all appear in red because I've colored the IK leg layer red. Now we don't need the tip joint either. And there we go, we've got the IK ready. Now it's time to copy that again to make the FK layer. So select these three. And I'm just hitting Command D, or you're probably Control D, to duplicate. Um, and I'm going to create a new layer and assign selected objects. OK. So I'm switching off the IK, and we'll call this FK. We'll give it a color as well, so we can we can see these bones clearer. Now, very important to rename them. So this is underscore FK. Same again, underscore FK. Same again. This is the boring bit. You can fast forward underscore FK and underscore FK okay same thing with the IK we don't want to get confused so I click that off we're on this layer now except for your IK I'm hitting the arrow key down just to go down one in the hierarchy each time after I press enter and I finish. So IK, enter, down, and underscore IK. There we go. Okay, all named. Um, now for the inverse kinematics, we better put in the handle um, under skeleton, IK handle. You want it as a rotate plane solver, not a chain solver. Uh, chain solvers, as you saw from the Minotaur rig, go mental when there isn't enough bones. It just becomes quite restrictive as opposed to making life easier. It's good for a normal human back with, with a lot more bones that will save the animator going in and tweaking each one. But when it's just a few, a chain solver will cause more problems than actually be a solution. Um, I'm selecting the tip here from where I wanted to start and where I want the actual handle to end down here. 
there we go IK handle done um, you can use whatever settings are you think fit best but I just use the default that I normally go with um, right so this will be scrunching up the leg like this and now what should we do should we give it controls first and then set it up or should we we should set it up first okay um what we need to do to make this influence the joints firstly is I know, i'll just put the, the ik handle ik handles always take selection preference i just added it to the ik leg layer it can be annoying because wherever you click you'll always get that first so you might want to hide it for a little while we'll need it again later um we're going to add constraints when you're adding constraints you want the object that is affected to be selected last um once you keep that in mind it's less confusing going around and adding these so what we're actually going to do is we're going to i'm going to be clicking on and off layers as i'm selecting but uh things will remain selected because I'm holding shift when I get the next one. I'm going to take the first leg segment, knock off FK, um, put on IK, hold down shift and take that. You can tell you got two objects from the dot dot dot. Um, and then lastly, it keeps thinking I'm double clicking, lastly select the main joint we want to influence and I want an orient constraint. And you can see in the channel box, the rotation is now affected from those two other bones. And here, there's more constraint information that they're both set to one. They both have an equal influence of one. So it will take the angle that's 50% the way between each two. We'll work on that. That's not exactly what we want. We'll work on that in a minute. Um, you've got to repeat this process. Oh, that gets annoying. Uh, all the way down the chain with the bones we want. There we go again. To effect, finally selecting the bone you want influenced. And orient constraint again. I should, I'll should. i open the orient constraint box in the next one. Okay. So starting again. This leg. Switch on this one. And... Grr, joints and this one constraint orient yeah you want to keep maintain offset ticked on it means if there is an offset already that it'll it'll remain obviously um there really shouldn't be an offset but uh it'll just stop things moving around okay and add and there's one last one to do the, the tricky one which is the tip which isn't in this layer. Uh oh. Okay. You can see the transforms being selected there. I selected the, the bone above it and just pressed down on the key. And for some reason, I didn't add it to the correct layer. So I'll do that now. And there we go. We can see it. Um, so him first. Grr. Then got to get in nice and close for this one like I said it'll select the IK handle uh, if it's not sure of your selection and finally this one's nice and easy to select and orient constraint okay now there our main bones are influenced by the other two so we won't want that as the case all the time it's just too confusing um, and not much will happen when you move stuff um, I'll break this up into a second lesson and uh, that's part one the reason I've done these all on top of each other will be clear later on at the end most of the tutorials I'll send you that are text pull the bones away so you can clearly see what you're doing it is a little more confusing with the layers but it makes your life much easier at the end when it, it comes to um, the final constraints Otherwise, some stuff can move out of place when you try and get the bones back into place. So I feel that there's no need to move them off in the first place. Okay, uh, done and done and on to the next one.